Okay, so if you guys have been following along, we bought this Bronco to put a five liter Coyote in it. And this video is specifically on how to make the Coyote fit inside a 1980 to 1996 F series truck. Whether it's a Bronco, uh, not the Bronco 2, nobody likes those, they're fun to beat up, but an actual Bronco. Um, and then F-150, 250, and 350 between 1980 and 1996. Here we go. myself I wouldn't get too carried away with this film. Oh this is so much better. <laughs> so these are this is the colors that we went with. You know? No. Load her up. This thing has been super good to us and has done more than it ever intended to do. We probably put more miles on this thing in the last year than in the previous 2030 put together. All the front off road, started making these brackets. Okay, so it's in there. I tried to put the long tube headers on there just to see if they would fit, and they do not. Okay, so if you guys remember our Mustang, it was an 05 that had a 2017 Ford Racing brand new 5.0 Coyote installed in it, but then the project was abandoned when we got it. We bought it specifically for this engine and always wanted to pull this out and put it into the Bronco. But Scott, our engine builder, fell in love with the car, so we worked together with him and a colleague of his, and we ended up painting the car and driving it around as is until the Bronco was ready. So to make the five liter run on its own, we're using a Holley Terminator system. Really like this system because it utilizes the cam phasers as well and allows for a pile of tuning. When we tuned our Mustang with the stock Holley Tune, we ended up getting about 440 to the crank, which is what it's advertised at. After tuning, we were able to get it up to 520 horse without touching anything else, no fueling, no nothing, other than the brand new Coyote that came from Ford Racing year 2017. I'm happy that this is what's happening in this car and, and thanks guys for sticking around. So anyway, here we go. Bronco's ready, so we're pulling the five liter out. The car is now in Scott's hand and he will be putting a V10 supercharged in there. We're building those videos in the next little bit. But as for us, we finally get our five liter on some chains dangling, ready to be put into our Bronco. There's all the room in the world for an oil filter. Why would you, <laughs> just don't care. <laughs> so steering was a little janky to get the steering shaft out, but if I dropped the rack, then uh, I could get the U-joint off and stick the steering off. I'm pretty sure they use an Imperial bolts on a metric. <laughs> uh, no, that's oh, not great. It. It's cut. <laughs> That's the only one I cut. I did everything else except for that one. You? <laughs> Richard? You're going to go to a manual rack anyway, right? So yeah. pull it off. Flaming River offers a, a manual, like, quick steer. So I think I might go to a manual. Uh, no, just a little bit of time. I don't want to get too excited. <laughs> <laughs> There's water coming out the exhaust. Is condensation built up over time? I hope. I hope. Is that, oh shit, is the shifter linkage attached to the bottom? Attached to the It is, yeah. There we go. I'm only upset because I know it probably will never get finished now. 
No, that's not good. I will help you finish. You just build the engine and we'll get it in there. It's not, I don't, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. No, it's not. I'm going to pull the headers off and pull the transmission off. Hopefully the headers come off okay. These guys really did butcher a lot of stuff. I think they used a whole bunch of different bolts in the headers. Hopefully they all use metric bolts. Regardless, it's much easier to work on it like this than it is on the engine bay. So we yank the supplier, throw it in the back of the truck, and start mocking it up for the uh, Bronco. I gotta test fit this and start stripping the Bronco down too. Okay, so LS swaps are super popular, but Coyote swaps are starting to catch up. Now, if you're deciding what engine you want, you have the choice between either a 5.0 that comes out of a Mustang or a 5.0 that comes out of a truck chassis like the F-150. The F-150 has more torque at the lower RPMs, which is better for pulling, which would be ideal for our Bronco, but we're not really pulling trailers or doing anything like that. If you're doing an old F-100, something like that, and you wanna pull your camper, an F-150 5.0 is a perfect fit. The oil filter points closer to the front of the engine, kind of points out on an angle on the front, whereas the Mustang, it points directly out to the side. Because R50 came out of a Mustang, we're gonna show you guys how to fit the engine into our Bronco using that platform, but you will have to look at your specific engine to see how exactly you're gonna notch it. One way or another, you do have to modify the cross member. Now, we've had a lot of comments too. Why don't you put a 7.3 in there? Um, because of cost. 7.3 is a lot more rare, supply and demand, costs a lot more than a Coyote. It's also a lot larger displacement, and we wanna make this a daily driver. The Coyote gets a decent amount of power and has decent fuel mileage as well. 7.3, you get to put a bigger number on your badge on the side of the truck, but because we drive it so much, we want to have something uh, that's decent and reliable. Before you start a project like this, I really want to stress that you want to put the Coyote in a decent body. Being in the Rust Belt, it is not worth trying to find something local. We've done many projects where we've driven down south, grabbed a nice clean vehicle, and had fun road tripping at home. And I highly recommend you do the same thing. Change your Facebook marketplace to Arizona, California, New Mexico, Texas, any dry southern state that preserves their vehicles. Now this one still needs a little bit of work, but for a 40 year old truck, she's in really, really good shape. Okay, got everything out of the way for our Coyote Swap and Bronco Bob from All For Fun Off Road said he started making these brackets. So what this does is relocate the mount for the Coyote, one for the driver's side and then one for the passenger side. So we'll remove the old mounts and then it looks like we've got the same type of mount um, that was on the 302. And that's a nice skinny mount that brings it nice and low. So I pulled these off the 302. Of course, we'll get brand new ones. But if this works, then uh, um, basically we'll bolt this down. We'll put the we'll put the Coyote on top of it. Get rid of the Mustang mount, and then see where we end up. And if we clear everything, then we can order new ones of these with some better rubber and then we're good all you have to do to make those fit is remove the stock engine mounts from the chassis the passenger side is bolted in and the driver's side is bolted in and riveted in you do have to grind off the rivets and then bolt the mount from all for fun off-road in its place okay mounts are in and uh make sure look really really good all the holes lined up so we'll strip the uh Harness and the mounts off of the coyote and make a plate to pick it up and we're laughing. There we go. 
It is just a bolt-in application. They are designed to work with 1994 to 2004 4.6 Mustang GT engine mounts. So you can use stock ones or you can upgrade yours to um, a polyurethane bushing, something from Energy Suspension or, or companies like that. However, you do need to make room for the alternator and the AC compressor and the oil filter relocate. If you use a 5 liter out of a F-150, I believe the oil filter points forward and you might actually not have to do anything at all. Okay, so it's in there. I tried to put the long tube headers on there just to see if they would fit and they do not. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because if they fit, it's like what well, we have and we might as well put them on. If they don't fit, I can go back to a cast manifold. And I know you're thinking, whoa, whoa, cast manifold, dude, you got long tube headers. The sound is amazing. No, no, it's not. It's, it's fun for somebody who doesn't own one and drive one as a daily, because that, uh, even the Mustang, it was fun for a little while, and then it just got annoying. It's just too loud. The, the Coyote sounds fantastic. I still think this is one of the best sounding engines. Um, They've got this bark and the snarl to it that uh, I, I really like. When you step into it, you'll still be able to tell that this is not a little carved 302. So I'm not worried about that. We'll get some cast manifolds on the way, ones that go nicely along the side and then dump in the back. We are going to put cats on it and mufflers. We can still get pulled over for modifying stuff like this. And basically the first thing the cops do is look and see if you've got cats. If you don't have cats, then uh, off the road you, you go. Now this is not, not a vehicle that is screaming pull me over because I did a bunch of modifications to it, but um, we do want to do our best to uh, be legal. So I'm gonna yank the Coyote back out again. Um, I know that I have to notch this nice and close and down over a bit. I think I will notch this side right away too because the AC compressor needs to go here. Thing is, I don't think I'm gonna put AC in it because, um, take the top off. That's what it's for. <laughs> so the thing is, we got an AC unit here and it kind of sucks when it's, something's there that's not being used. I don't think I wanna get rid of that because the, um, there's just too much room in the engine bay. The engine fits in there nice, but I think the engine bay should be filled. We got a battery over here, we got a coolant over here, we got a nice intake that's gonna come around, um, nice air box right here. So um, I'll think about it. I'll probably notch it in because it doesn't take anything to bend some plate up and notch it into the frame now. Uh, I'm gonna finish off the cradle with the engine out now that uh, this is cut for the Dana 44. So we'll weld that in solid, and then I'll get Vince to do all this welding because he needs something to do too. So we'll clean that off, we yank that out, um, pull the inner fenders out, and then start cutting that out. There we go. So because we had that bracket from the pan hard bar or the bracket that gets welded up underneath, we had to raise this up a little bit. This is the max amount. Our alternator sits right here, but that still gives us a little bit of meat to weld the uh, pan hard bar bracket to the cross member securely. So we'll trim this off. Cause that, that's about as big as a uh, hole I had to cut. And then I just get my CAD, my cardboard accurately drawn and uh, Put that in there like so. We'll hit it, tap it with a hammer and that'll get the outside profile and then we'll cut it out of steel, bend it in steel, weld it up. Bam! And we'll close this corner in afterwards and we'll bend that up. So you bend this inside one first, then the, the plate can lay in there. So basically just stick it in there. You can do it upside down even. Stick it in there, scribe the bottom, bend it, then you can lay it in there and then you can mark exactly where the other ones are gonna go and then bend her up. Actually, 
so that's perfect. Okay, so I completely goofed that. Look at that. I'm not even close. I don't know how that happened. Um, yeah, weird. Anyway, so we'll make a cut here. Um, and then we'll make a cut here, and then we'll just weld that seam. I, I didn't want to weld it, but Vince can fix it. <laughs> here we go. Guys, we cut this weld. We cleaned it up back there, if you can see that. We'll get a nice weld back there, where we never could before. And then we'll squeeze this together, it should be golden. Catching on both sides. Never. Okay, so Vince welded that bottom on real nice while I played with this other plate. Um, and I figured it's a better idea to do it in two pieces, but weld the top and then the bottom and then just heat it up when it's nice and secure in there and then we'll just tap it down with a hammer and then we'll make that bottom piece. Because it was just, it wasn't working, it wasn't looking good. So now we can weld the top, weld the side, weld up until here, and then we'll start tapping it with a hammer. We did leave this hole here because it was originally there. We tried to make it look like it was factory, like it was supposed to be there. That still gives us some access to easily put the bolts in and get the rivets out. And uh, we're really happy with how this sits. If you have the twin I-beam, you do not need to make this modification, but we raised this up and then welded this flat bar on the bottom again to try and get that stock look still. If you're thinking about putting a day of 44 in at any time while the engine's out and you're doing this modification anyway, just cut two inches off the bottom of your cross member and just fill that in. Strength-wise, it does not matter. Now, for transmissions, we're going with a 6R80 and a manual transfer case not from the same year. We picked this transmission up out of a 2012 with a junk five liter in front. And then we got this transfer case from Tuesday. Any local wrecker can source one of these for you. This is out of an earlier F-150 where they still use the manual transfer case um, on the floor shift. So we had to use this one because otherwise you need electronics to make a shift, computers and BCMs and Things have to talk to each other, and we're not into that, into this old Bronco. We like the feeling of being able to grab it, clunk it, and move it into four-wheel drive. So I believe this was out of a 2010 F-150, and you have to specify that you want a manual shift. I highly recommend um, ordering the shift lever with it. That gives you the bracket that attaches to the transmission and allows you to shift and we will have to grab that one yet because we did not get it with ours. We we're gonna rebuild this 6R80, um, but unfortunately we're having trouble in today's times to uh, source internal parts for this 6R80. We are going to cross our fingers, change the oil, and see how far this thing gets us. Now I've also swapped a 4BT Cummins into a 2004 Tahoe. That's a really nice series if you want to check that out. And we used the USS Shift, the Bowman Shift controller for that 4L60. That also works for the 4L80, same controller. And I'm really happy with them. So we've got a US Shift shift controller coming from the same company that is able to do the 6R80. 6R80 is a cheaper option than the 10 speed. Um, and for us driving this thing only in the summer, six speed will do us just fine. The transmission cross member bolts right to our long arms that we installed from all for fun off road. And that stiffens up the frame where all the torque gets put from the transmission. So we're kind of killing two birds with one stone. We'll notch the AC compressor into the member in a little bit. Not super crucial. AC is one of those last things that uh, engine swaps seem to forget about. And this being a Bronco, we really don't utilize the AC, but because we have AC, we'll probably put the AC compressor in and get it work running eventually. Now's the time to weld it in.
Okay, so that side's notched, that side's notched. We've test fitted the Coyote, we know that it fits. So this doesn't affect anything. It's not in the way of the frame, yeah. but their alternator might be in a different spot. I don't think so because it looks like it's cast into the block itself. So their alternator would be here anyway. And that pulley doesn't move. So I imagine that this is kind of how it sits, minus the AC compressor. And now we are going to say goodbye to this project for about a month, month and a half, well, six weeks because the Bronco is heading off to paint. All right, so hopefully that answers some questions for you guys. Before I dive into engine swaps, even though we do some unique one-offs, um, this five liter is becoming more and more popular. I'm trying to do some research on what's involved in doing the swap. Everyone's a little bit different, pulleys, front axle, things like that, where you got the truck out of, but there weren't very many videos on the specifics on what's involved in doing the, the five liter. More in the older generation, the first generation Broncos and, and uh, that, I, I found more LS swaps in the Broncos than I did in uh, Coyotes. Uh, but hopefully uh, we can motivate you guys to uh, keep a brand loyal maybe, not piss off the purists. Dirt Cinema, I'm looking at you. As you can see, the Bronco's gone. The engine's hanging here. Uh, I haven't been in the shop for a little bit because we were all over the place. The Bronco is getting sandblasted and getting a full body job. And you can see the full finished product, hopefully at Motorama this year at 2023 in Toronto. We will be there. Hopefully we'll have it all together and SEMA ready. <laughs> <laughs> and then have it ready for the summer to drive. We're excited about this, so stick around for the swap. We got lots of more cool stuff going. Check out the Holly Dash that we put in there, made it look like a brand new Bronco. We got the new interior in it from TMI. She's gonna be a really nice ride when it's done. While the Bronco's getting painted, we're working on the C10 and um, a bunch of other projects as well. So lots of cool stuff happening on the channel. So stick around and uh, see how they all turn out. It's gonna be a good year for us. Very excited and very happy on all the cool things happening. So um, remember, if you're not filthy, you're, you're not rich and you're not working on it because uh, dirty hands means cool projects. Get out there and work on it. It's so much fun, guys. Here we go.